The ECB has cut its deposit rate from 4% to 3.75%, its first move lower since 2019. The bank had all but promised the cut after seeing inflation fall to just over 2% target. For his take, Lachlan Meekin from Go Markets joins me now. Lachlan, good to see you. I mean, this was widely hey, telegraphed. Hey, um, widely telegraphed. But just talk us through, I guess, the euro reaction to this decision. Yeah, it's probably the most uh, telegraphed mon monetary policy decision in the history of central banks, I think. And I think if they hadn't telegraphed it um, so hard, there was a lot of arguments to be made that, that it really should have been a hold uh, overnight with the, the way their wage data, as you mentioned before, and then some of the economic improvements. But um, it was seen as a, a hawkish cut. There was uh, some dissent with uh, Governor Holzman, I think, uh, voting against um, that cut. So... We did see a, actually a bounce in the euro, but obviously being widely um, expected they were going to cut. It was more of um, how the voting went and, and how the press conference went after. So obviously, as you said, they didn't uh, commit to any further cuts. So we'll, we'll have to see, very data dependent, but the euro jumped up to around that 109 against the US dollar, which has been a, a really stiff resistance all year um, for pulling back a little. And, and it's been very quiet for the, for the week, actually, very tight range. So... Um, that will obviously change tonight after, you know, very pivotal non-farm payrolls and a really big week in US data next week as well. Interesting. A previous guest was talking to my colleague Nadine about the fact that there might be a bit of dollar pump and dump ahead of the uh, NFP. What's your take? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty bearish on the US dollar now. I was bullish for the first half of the year. I thought it would probably hold up a bit longer, but it's, it's been in a real downtrend if you look at the, the dollar index since for about a month now. Um, the US data has been pretty weak. I think the NFP, more, it could very well be a miss. Um, there's CPI next week, if that's another low reading. Um, and of course, FOMC. So um, I think the US dollar probably is looking, there's, there's more bearish uh, you know, drivers for it than bullish at the moment. And also there's a, the Bank of Japan meeting next week where they're expected to be a little bit hawkish and cut back on some of their bond purchases, which will, will knock the US uh, dollar yen pair down and some of that unwind of that carry trade will also weigh on the US dollar. So obviously with that happening, um, the euro, you know, anything against the US dollar has will have a bit of a tailwind. Um, but yeah, the, the figures over the next week are, are really big ones. So let's wait and see. Well, exactly. And the other thing is just this focus on when the Fed might follow the likes of Sweden, Switzerland, Canada and the ECB. So with that in mind, we've been seeing a lot of movement in gold. What are you seeing there in the price action? Well, gold's an interesting one. Um, there's so much, so much interest in it. It's, they're by, by far our biggest um, instrument that by volume-wise across my industry. It's, it's just been a um, crazy amount of trading going on in gold. The, the reaction from Can uh, the Canadian Central Bank and from the ECB, I think, is very bullish on gold. We've seen these central banks cutting rates, um, even though inflation's above their target. Now, is that going to continue on with the Fed? Is this going to be a story for all central banks where... Um, you know, if they're weighing up stagflation, they're more interested in stopping the stag than the flation, it seems. So that's, I think, very bullish for gold, that um, so these banks are going to cut without waiting for inflation to get to their target band. So that I really think that 2400, um, the big resistance level there is, is very well in play over the next week. If we get through that, um, especially if we get some dovish figures out of the US over the coming days, um, that all-time high, I think, is certainly in play. There's a uh, a lot of momentum behind it and dips are being bought. So for the short term, definitely bullish on gold. Have you been watching the momentum in silver too, Lachlan? Because, I mean, that's just been quite an extraordinary move as well. Yeah, I mean, they move, you know, almost in lockstep with each other. I, um, it's, it's a much more liquid contract gold, so we see more trading in that. And, and silver being a little bit less liquid will have a bit more volatility in its moves. But um, if you're into precious metals, either one will, will get you there. But uh, gold, I would think, would be the the most popular, and that will drag silver up with it, just um, being in the same complex, basically. All right, let's talk about the Aussie. I mean, we've got the RBA meeting in a couple of weeks. We had that GDP print just showing that our economy is starting to um, crawl, I guess. It's it's slowing down. ANZ has revised its rate cut call. They now see one in February rather than May 2025. Um, what sort of momentum are you expecting to see in the currency? Yeah, Aussie's been, uh, it's been a very quiet week for it. It's just ranged between 67 is really that kind of line in the sand to the upside. It's held it in place for, for a while now. And 66, there's a bit of support down there. Um, it was interesting to see the reaction after the CPI, which obviously came in much hotter the last one that we had. And, and the Aussie dollar 
barely rallied at all on that and ended up the session down actually so um it's it's struggling a bit at these levels i think a weaker us dollar obviously will maybe get it to test that 67 resistance but um if if any of these us figures come in a bit stronger I, i'd expect it to be treating uh testing that 66 to the downside and i guess if you look at if you take the us dollar out of the equation and look how the uh, aussie's been um comparing to the kiwi dollar for instance for the last month or so it's just been um you know pretty brutal downtrend there so i think it is struggling a bit but next week's employment will be a very important um obviously we had the miss in the gdp next week's employment we had a big figure in, in april there's a good chance the the may figure is going to revert somewhat um and you know we might even see a tick up in unemployment which is um obviously we're going to put pressure on the rba the week after but interesting to see if they talk up the inflation print or if they're more you know um, focused on that weak gdp and if we do get a weak employment figure and if they go with the other central banks playbook um you know they may be a little bit dovish in that meeting if we do get a, a really poor employment figure next week and that put more pressure on the aussie yeah, I guess that also just puts paid to, to what we could see from the RBA. I, I know that you're not an economist, but just in terms of, I guess, the conundrum here that we're seeing, what's your sort of view of the economy and how it's um, going to just rattle what Michelle Bullock, I guess, is thinking? Yeah, I don't envy the position they're in. I mean, um, with, with, with these readings, with the GDP, employment, there's been some other kind of lower ones in retail sales, etc., but yet inflation has been really sticky. And, and, and when you look at the ECB in Canada, um, I mean, their inflation was just north of two and a half and we're still, you know, near three and a half. So um, it's it's a tough one. It's going to be a real juggling act for. And I think next week's employment figure, if it does come in really low, um, which is a definite possibility, then it's going to be really interesting to see how they handle that, how they weigh up the uh, the the economic um, aspects against the inflation aspects because inflation's all they've been speaking about mostly um, has been their big driver but if the economy is really slowing down um, I'll have to wait and see but I'll be interested to see how they handle that.